Geothermal means heat from the earth. It provides a clean, renewable, sustainable source of low carbon energy that can play a significant role in tackling the climate emergency we're facing. In volcanically active areas close to tectonic plate boundaries, it has been used for decades to supply renewable electricity and heat in more than 70 countries. But it can also be used in other areas away from plate boundaries, as long as the rock temperature is high enough and there's enough permeability for water to circulate in the rocks. Harnessing geothermal energy from the hot rocks beneath Cornwall depends on circulating water through networks of natural fractures. The best fracture zones are found along ancient fault lines, so that's where developers have concentrated their drilling. One potential cause of concern with targeting these structures is the possibility of triggering or inducing small earthquakes deep underground. But the technical language of what's called induced seismicity can be confusing. What's the difference between a fracture and a fault? Or between an earthquake, a tremor and a seismic event? This film will explain the physical processes that lead to seismicity, the differences between natural and induced earthquake events, and the nature of seismicity in regions away from tectonic plate boundaries, such as Cornwall. For millions of years, our planet's crustal plates have been moving around, changing the shape of the continents, creating mountains and volcanoes. The most active regions are at the boundaries of these tectonic plates, where they're moving apart, sliding past each other, or colliding. This is also where some of the world's largest geological faults are found. The San Andreas Fault is the most famous active fault in the world. It runs for 1,200 kilometers down the western coast of the United States, marking the line where the North American and Pacific plates are moving slowly past each other at a rate of 20 to 30 millimeters per year. Since the fault line isn't smooth, the moving plates get stuck and the pressure builds up like compressing a spring. When the rocks can't withstand the pressure anymore, they break. When that happens, the fault moves suddenly and there's an earthquake. We use a magnitude scale to describe the amount of energy released in an earthquake. And this scale is logarithmic, which means that a magnitude two event is 10 times bigger than a magnitude one. And a magnitude three is 10 times bigger than a magnitude two, and so on. Destructive earthquakes are usually above magnitude six. And the 2011 Japan earthquake had a magnitude of about nine. Cornwall's in a stable tectonic region, far away from any plate boundaries, so we don't get strong earthquakes. But we do sometimes get minor ones. About 600 have been recorded since monitoring began in the early 1980s. The largest of them being a magnitude 3.8 near Penzance in 1996. In August 2019, there was a magnitude 2.3 event near Helston. But although it was quite widely felt and heard, it was still a very small earthquake. The risk of damage or injury from Cornwall seismicity is extremely low. Earthquakes can only be felt if the shockwaves are strong enough to reach the surface and can only cause damage if they're still strong enough to shake the ground forcibly when they get there. If an earthquake is small or very deep, the energy is absorbed in the rocks and the shock waves die away before they reach the surface, like ripples on a pond. Even away from the plate boundaries, there are natural fractures and faults in almost all rocks, caused by pressure building up from distant tectonic movements but the faults tend to be smaller and much less active. In Cornwall, small faults and fractures are easy to see in rocks at the beach. They can sometimes be filled with valuable minerals or water resources, but other than that, they don't affect us and don't represent any risk. Most Cornish earthquakes, therefore, go unnoticed, and sensitive monitoring equipment is needed to detect them. The UK has a national network of seismometers operated by the British Geological Survey. Geothermal developers have added more sensors around specific project sites to increase the sensitivity and accuracy of detection and location. At the United Downs Deep Geothermal Power Project, a network of seismometers has been installed that can detect earthquakes hundreds of times too small to be felt at the surface. This is a valuable tool to help engineers understand the movement of water through the natural fracture system because it can detect any seismic events caused by the water circulation. These are called induced seismic events. The term seismic event means the same as earthquake. 
Induced events are exactly the same as natural ones, except that the trigger for movement is human activity, rather than a gradual build-up of geological pressure over time. The seismic shockwaves are still generated by movements of rock, but in the case of geothermal projects, this can be caused by water pressure, helping to unstick the rock along the fault or small fractures. This is not the same process as fracking, where the injection of large volumes of fluids at high flow rates and pressures is used to create multiple new fractures in intact rock to drain out the oil or gas. The operation of geothermal reservoirs in Cornwall is likely to cause some minor seismicity, but most induced events will be much too small and too deep to be noticed at the surface. And even if any are large enough to be felt, they're still very unlikely to cause any damage. In the 1980s, the Hot Dry Rock Geothermal Research Programme carried out in Cornwall detected about 10,000 induced seismic events over a number of years. Only two of them were felt at the surface, and neither caused any damage. The largest had a magnitude of just two. Nevertheless, the United Downs project takes the possibility of induced seismicity seriously. Using information from its dedicated seismic network, Geothermal engineering will manage any induced seismicity using existing British standards and planning guidelines for blasting, quarrying and mining activity. The management protocol is based on how much ground vibration is measured at the surface, rather than on the magnitude of the induced event. The vibration limits are very stringent, designed to halt activity that would result in seismicity strong enough to cause damage to any buildings. So the risk from induced earthquakes is extremely small. It's essential to have community support for geothermal projects to succeed. So developing that energy potential without causing a seismic nuisance is a critical priority for all developers. By careful management of our operations, accurate detection and location of even the smallest seismic events, implementation of a conservative seismicity management protocol and continuous community engagement, Geothermal engineering aims to harness the geothermal potential under our feet and develop a sustainable energy source for Cornwall without harming its land, its buildings or its people.